of Swartz distributions and proposed an interpretation of quantum mechanics, dubbed the structured time interpretation, and a model of physical time evolution. Also, he noted that every aspect of special relativity, very courageously noted that every aspect of special relativity, was published by Poincaré in papers between 1898 and 1905. He further noted that Einstein made a mistake on which much of modern physics has been built. He has proposed appropriate corrections. This award is made for these deep insights into all these areas of physics. Ladies and gentlemen, Chandra Kant Raju.
The simple fact is, and which anybody can check, but most people do not, that the microbial model experiment was performed to discriminate between two ether theories. One was the theory of Prenel, the other was the theory of Stokes. And the Stokes theory involved a mathematical absurdity, but the experiment came out in favor of the theory. And therefore, Lawrence rejected it because he said, you cannot have a mathematical absurdity even if experiment supports it. And the whole myth of the michelson modley experiment obscures the key point of relativity, which is that Newtonian physics never defined a proper clock. Therefore, it is impossible for the experiment to have measured the speed of light, or for that matter, the speed of anything else. Why Newtonian physics never defined a proper clock is a separate story. I won't go into that here. I have gone into it elsewhere. I won't talk about it here. If you follow Poincaré's line of thought from 1898 to 1904, this point about the need to define a physical measure of time comes out with great clarity. Authoritative sources would tell us that Poincaré believed in ether or that he vapored. However, those are plain falsehoods, as anyone can check by reading Poincaré or even reading the extensive quotes from him that I have provided in my books. It was Poincaré who coined the phrase, the phrases, principle of relativity, and Lawrence Transform. In a celebrated 1904 paper, he spoke of an entirely new mechanics which would be, above all, characterized by this fact that no velocity could surpass that of light any more than any temperature can fall below absolute zero, unquote. So that's the theory of relativity in a nutshell. Could Einstein have arrived at that theory independently? Such claims of independent rediscovery, just when a dependent uh, discovery was possible, they are a scandalous part of present day history of science. It is, however, let's look at Einstein's case on its individual merits. It's well known that Einstein had read Poincaré's work on relativity from 1898 until 1902 with great excitement, and he had discussed it with his friend. So the only question is whether he had read Lawrence's 1904 paper, Poincaré's 1904 paper, and he denied it. However, as Whitaker first pointed out, Poincaré used the word relativity for the first time in his 1904 paper. He had earlier used the term principle of relative motion in the 1902 book. And since Einstein's paper contained no new idea or formula and repeated that word, therefore Whitaker concluded that Einstein had borrowed his ideas. This was way back. He wrote the biography of uh, Einstein in the Proceedings of the Royal Society. So I further pointed out along the same lines that Einstein casually used the strange terms longitudinal mass and transverse mass introduced very circumspectly by Lawrence in the very paper Einstein later denied reading. Whitaker's arguments and mine have been met with great hostility by those in scientific authority though no one has so far actually addressed the points that were raised. So cases where one student copies from another but denies it are commonplace for a teacher. So the simple way to resolve this, such cases is to test the understanding of the student by administering a verbal test. So we cannot thus interrogate the past. But mistakes are proof of lack of understanding. If a person claiming independent rediscovery shows lack of understanding through a mistake, that is proof of copying according to my epistemic test. And this is exactly what happened in this case. Einstein failed to understand what Poincaré, the mathematician, understood. Namely, that relativity changes also the character of the equations of physics. They can no longer be ordinary differential equations of Newtonian physics, but must be functional differential equations, which Poincaré took for granted must be retarded. 
Einstein never understood this aspect of relativity till his death. That settles the issue. And I think that uh, uh, possibly as a pit and clerk, he realized that he could copy ideas from frontline thinkers, for there is no legal patent on idea. For almost a century now, it would seem, people have worshipped a false god of science. There is a saying that people who do not learn from history are condemned to repeat it. In 1994, I pointed out in my book, Time Towards a Consistent Theory, that the use of functional differential equations leads to a shift away from the Newtonian paradigm of ordinary differential equations, going beyond textbook relativity. Textbook relativity doesn't talk about this. For example, the century-old contradiction between Newtonian mechanics and the entropy law of thermodynamics could be very easily resolved with functional differential equations. In 2004, exactly a century after Poincaré's seminal paper on relativity, I published the first solutions of functional differential equations of retarded electrodynamics in a significant physical context, that of the classical hydrogen atom. And in 2005, exactly a century after Einstein's paper on relativity, and in a lecture intended to commemorate that event, Sir Michael Atia, a person regarded as the leading mathematician in the world, repeated my claim, first made in my 1994 book, that the use of functional differential equations could also explain the puzzling features of quantum mechanics. Atiyah claimed independent rediscovery. And even after he was personally informed of my work, the notices of the American Mathematical Society ran a prominent article on his lecture in June 2006, crediting Atiyah with the suggestion to use functional differential equations in physics and referring to it as Atiyah's hypothesis. My earlier work was credited only after long correspondence in a short and difficult to spot letter in the notices of the AMS in April 2007. I pointed out that such a belated acknowledgement without an apology was worth little. I again applied my epistemic test and pointed out that the phrase Atiyah's hypothesis involved a serious mistake. Functional differential equations are a natural consequence of relativity where use requires no hypothesis. So the claim about Atiyah's hypothesis involved a conceptual mistake, apart from a historical mistake in crediting Atiyah. I wrote a letter to the journal along these lines. The journal, however, refused to publish it, preferring to leave the mistake uncorrected. Although many prominent people, many prominent scientists from India and abroad signed a petition that the letter should be published and the matter should be debated publicly the editor of the notices and the American Mathematical Society ignored the petition and hung on to the decision to suppress the matter. That is how scientific authority functions at the very highest level. So I think that uh, one can well imagine how it functions at lower levels and how much it misleads us about the truth. So those who place their trust in it deserve what they get and their progeny can continue to believe science is all about implicitly trusting those in positions of scientific authority. As for me, I am not in the business of mobilizing popular opinion or winning a popularity contest. My aim was to find the truth, and I have found it, I think, the truth both about science and about scientific authority. Knowledge was what I sought, and I have found it that is rewarding itself. On the pleasant side, there are a number of interesting possibilities that can be explored with the new technique of functional differential equations. As I argued in my 1994 book, if we make absolutely no hypothesis and drop even the traditional hypothesis of causality, then the functional differential equations of physics must be of mixed type and not retarded as Poincaré had thought. This leads to a number of interesting consequences. For quantum mechanics on the one hand, and for biological organisms on the other. The qualitative consequences are already startling. For this physics is non-mechanistic and leads to a structure of time as I have explained in my books and papers. The further quantitative consequences I hope to explore in